What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I've seen lately on social media a lot of people are saying that the Elimination Chamber was very predictable and it wasn't a good show. Now, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, and you know, I'm all for that. If you like the show, cool. If you didn't like the show, that's cool too. You know, it's your opinion. But the reasoning behind so much of this, I guess you can say, take from a lot of people is quite puzzling to me. The reason why I say that is because wrestling, for the most part, has usually been predictable, especially with what we've seen, you know, storylines play out. Some of our favorite wrestlers had a lot of predictable storylines, a lot of predictable matches, but we enjoyed it because we were on the ride, on the journey with them, on their on on their particular story, trying to figure out will they complete their mission? Will they become the champion? Will they finally beat the bad guy? That's kind of what wrestling's always been built upon. The story mixed in with the combat. The, the physical element so the fact that a lot of people are saying oh the elimination was uh, elimination chamber was predictable what was the point you're kind of missing the point what i'm trying to get people to understand and maybe some who have felt that way not to change their mind but to kind of understand why things happen the way they do the predictability was there is because it's a it's a show that's really a stepping stone to wrestlemania we're really on the road to wrestlemania and we're trying to figure out what matches are going to take place on wrestlemania so you're gonna have situations where the elimination chamber is set up to set up more matches for the show the men's elimination chamber was to set up who was going to face Seth Rollins. The women's elimination chamber was set up to see who was going to face either Rhea Ripley or Nia Jax. That's it. What it's always been. And you can say maybe in the past it was less predictable on who was going to win their respective chambers. But I do remember in the past where it was, a, you know, there was times where it was predictable on who was going to win and who was going to lose. Does it make it that less enjoyable? For some people it does, but then it's like, well, how can you be a wrestling fan when a lot of stories, if not most of the stories that you've seen in the past from your favorite wrestlers were pretty predictable? I, I, I don't think too many people thought that Becky wasn't going to win the match. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of people that figured Becky was going to win the match if you watched the shows. The weekly television, they were letting you know that Becky most likely was going to face Rhea. They had been teasing it before the Royal Rumble. They literally had a one-on-one -on -one segment on Raw where Rhea said from her mouth, I hope you win the Royal Rumble. Because I would like to, I would love to face you at WrestleMania. Why would they have her say that just for it to not even play out? Now, I've also seen a pocket of the fan base want Liv Morgan to win. Now, here's the thing. Liv Morgan actually had a pretty good showing. She did. In my opinion, she had a really good showing in the Elimination Chamber. She felt like she belonged there. She didn't feel like she was just a placeholder. So I can appreciate them doing that. But on paper, the bigger match for WrestleMania is going to be Becky versus Rhea than Liv versus Rhea. And Liv has some, you know, legitimate gripes storyline-wise against Rhea, but I don't think that's going to happen right now. I think there's a possibility that happens at WrestleMania because I do believe Rhea will retain and she should retain. I think they can revisit that after WrestleMania. But right now, it's, Liv is not as over as she once was before she got uh, injured. That's just what it is. So right now, WWE is trying to build the biggest possible card for WrestleMania. And the biggest card right now would be Rhea and Becky. So that's kind of one of those things where if you watch the show, they were kind of telling you who was going to be 
the person I was going to win in the women's elimination chamber. Same with the men's, except the men's it was a little bit different because you can you could pull some audibles here. The the highly favorites was Drew and Randy Orton. The surprising thing there for me was the whole situation with AJ Styles. I thought they were going to really do something with LA Knight and Logan for the United States Championship, but that may not be the route they're going. I think they're going to build up something with AJ and LA Knight. So that's interesting. Was not really expecting that, to be honest with you. Some people may have, but I wasn't. Randy Orton and Logan was not really expecting that to be a thing, but it looks like that may be what they going go into into WrestleMania for the United States Championship. So that could be interesting. And that's not even a guarantee that Randy Orton wins at this year's WrestleMania, you know, against Logan Paul if they do have that match. So that's just one of those things where it's like, okay, that, that to me spices up things for the WrestleMania season. Now, Drew winning, I don't think anyone had, was, uh, I wouldn't say people didn't think Drew couldn't win. Like I said, I, I, I'm sure people had thought maybe Randy Orton could pull it off. So it was a little bit, I guess you could say, unpredictable on who would win. But a lot of people chose Drew to win because of how they've been booking him, how they've been building up his heel character. And it just doesn't make sense without the interference of CM Punk. Obviously, he's hurt. It wouldn't make sense for him to not win it if they weren't going to do something with CM Punk involved or Sami Zayn involved. That's the only thing that would have made sense for, for Drew to not win it. But outside of that, Drew winning it kind of makes sense. Yes, is it predictable? Sure. But it makes sense in the grand scheme of things because essentially Drew took uh, CM Punk's spot. He took his WrestleMania spot and he's kind of healing it up because of that. And there's the story there. Drew's trying to complete his story. He's trying to save WrestleMania. So it doesn't make sense to build this guy up, build this guy up for these past few months, have him go on this great heel run, have him do all these social media things only for him to not win. For the sake of not being predictable, that's the thing. And of course, Rhea Ripley. I've seen some people complaining about that. To be honest with you, did you really think Nia was going to win? It doesn't even make sense for Nia to win. It doesn't. Yes, Nia is born in Australia, but she didn't live there like that. Rhea was born and raised there. Her family was there in front row. If you've been watching wrestling, for the most part, when the family's there, and they're in their home country or hometown, it's a good chance they may win. Not all the time, but it's a good chance they may win. And there was no way they were going to have Rhea main event the show to lose. It's just, I've been watching wrestling too long. I would have, that would have been a swerve that probably wouldn't have made any sense because there's no reason to take the belt off of her right now. Not, not right now. So, I don't know. Some people will say, you know, wrestling fans are never satisfied. And there's some truth to that. <laughs> wrestling fans will truly never be satisfied. But the whole notion of this was predictable, it was a waste of time, I wouldn't go that far. Only because when you really break it down, it's the story that they're telling. And if you feel that this was super predictable and this was bad, then all the other times that you've watched your favorite wrestlers win in situations that obviously was predictable and it was set up th for them to win, then those situations should be just as bad, right? Now, would I have stayed up at four in the morning to watch this show if this wasn't my job? Most likely not. I probably would have watched it, you know, <laughs> later on when I had woken up. But this is not a show I would have willingly stayed up if it wasn't for you guys you know what i'm saying it was one of those type of shows you can catch not you know you don't have to watch it live so i can understand why some people feel like damn i stayed up for this understandable if it's not your job to do that but also at the same time it, to me it was a solid show 
It was a solid show. It was enjoyable. Had some good moments. There wasn't really a match on there, me personally, that I just felt that was bad. Everything was watchable, and I enjoyed it. Crowd atmosphere was great. We got to get out this notion that predictability equals bad because that's not the case. Yes, this whole card was predictable. Yes, pretty much all the matches that people had been seen being built up, we knew who was going to be the winners. That's fine. But it doesn't mean it's bad. That means we're still on the ride. We're still on this, this roller coaster of them telling this story of highs and lows. You know, and we got to wait to see how it play out at WrestleMania. Simple as that. That's really what this is. This pay-per-view was to set up more matches for WrestleMania and see how things will play out. So let things play out and we get to WrestleMania and we'll see the culmination of these stories that have been told and been built up. Simple as that. Because that's just my personal opinion on it. We really got to get out this predictability equals bad because if that's the case then most of the, our favorite wrestling storylines and wrestlers and, and moments were super predictable if that's the case and that means they were all bad which is fucking cap so comment down below let me know do you guys feel like the show was too predictable to you and do you feel like that was a bad thing or do you feel like it doesn't really affect the overall story, you kind of knew what was going to happen going in, but you wanted to see some good matches and you're looking forward to where they take the story next going into WrestleMania. Y'all let me know down below, but I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.